You understand what the process will be in a standard recording session. You understand the recording chain and the steps involved in getting from concept to finished recording. But there are many routes you can take on your journey to creating a recording that satisfies both you and your chosen audience. Let's look at some different pre-production goals for different recording types. Pre-production can make all the difference between a successful recording session and one that leaves a big hole in the work you're trying to get done as well as your pocketbook. Making a to-do list is a great help, especially before going into a commercial recording studio. It's a useful practice even for projects in your home studio. The pre-production list will vary with the type and complexity of each project. Let's start with a simple recording project. A singer-songwriter needs to create some demos of his or her songs. You'll need to consider the elements that will be recorded, the voice or voices, and the accompanying instrument, usually piano or guitar, unless the producer or artist feels the backing of a full band is necessary to show the quality and performance potential of the song. Here's some examples of things to consider for this type of recording session. First, is this the right recording studio for this project? If your studio is set up for live recording, you'll have examples of recordings you've made there. You'll know that your live room, the room where the actual performance will take place, sounds good, meaning that it sounds good acoustically. We'll discuss ways to improve the sound of the room in detail later on in this series. Second, does the studio have a selection of microphones that will show off the singer's voice in the best possible light? There are many considerations that go into selecting the right mic for a singer, which we'll look at in our microphone section of this method. Similarly, how will the singer's accompaniment be recorded? If the accompanist plays guitar, is it acoustic or electric? Will the electric be amplified? Although an instrument might plug directly into your mixer or audio interface, that might not be the best way to record it. Having a selection of microphone types, dynamic, condenser, ribbon, and so on, gives the most flexibility in recording any type of instrument or vocal. Consider the performance itself. Listen to the song as the singer or musician performs it. Does the musician have good time? In other words, does the rhythm of the performance seem steady and have a good feel? This can be a matter of personal perception, but to a trained ear, it'll be clear if the rhythm feels disjointed or irregular and potentially unappealing. If this is the case, the musician may benefit from the use of a click track, a steady, audible pulse that the musician can hear while he or she is playing. A click track can use a percussion or electronically sound that's played through the artist's headphones so as not to bleed into the vocal or instrument microphone. Click track can take some getting used to, especially for a musician who hasn't worked with one before or one who has a lot of rhythmic variation in his or her playing. A click track may not be the best option in some cases. Many performances benefit from rhythmic variation. For example, a song's chorus may speed up naturally, and intros and tags or codas may necessarily be played slower. If a song has these natural rhythm changes, but the musician still plays with too much irregularity within each song, it may be best to record without a click track or use one that's programmed with the tempo changes built in. As mentioned, a click track is played only in the musician's headphones, which means that another capability the studio should have is a monitoring system for the live musicians. A standard feature of classic analog mixing boards is the ability to set up a separate headphone mix so that the performers in the live room can hear a mix of voices and instruments that's different from what the engineer is hearing in the control room. We'll look at this more when we dive into our recording project. It is possible to record a live performance in a semi-pro or single room home studio, but great care must be taken and more trial and error may be involved in getting good takes. A good pre-production list takes these capabilities into account. If they're not in place, a client or musician may be wasting time with an insufficient setup when they should be concentrating on their performance. What if your recording project requires more musicians and more instruments? Besides staying on top of all the tasks mentioned in the preparation video, having a detailed list of each band member, which instruments they play and other equipment they use on which songs, where they should be positioned relative to each other in the live room, and all other details of the music you want to record can help your engineer immensely and save you precious minutes of setup time when the meter's running. Even if you're recording yourself in your own space, a pre-production plan can save you time and energy 
as well as help keep your recording studio organized. Recording sessions can often turn into marathons that cause fatigue and sap your creative energy. The more details you can take care of before performing and recording, the fresher you'll be for the critical decisions that come during the actual recording process. Having all your guitars on stands and your mics in a closet or drawer, your computer table free of clutter, and keeping food and drinks in a separate area may sound finicky, but time and again have proven to be effective strategies for keeping the recording flowing, the work productive, and the cost down. In no other recording session is effective pre-production more important than in the computer-based all-digital project. If you use external synthesizers and other sound generators, are the sounds organized and instantly available for selection? Have they been loaded properly into the device you plan to use? In a pro recording studio session with many participants, untidy digital preparedness can threaten not only the session, but a career as well. If you're in charge of the digital assets of a recording session, check and double check your storage devices, your backups, and your connectivity, and ensure that your system is performing like clockwork. Even in a home studio, this is good advice for digital recording production. If you've already programmed demos of your recordings and plan to keep the tracks to mix at another studio, be sure the tracks are ready to transfer to the mixing studio system. More on this later in the method, specifically in the section on computer production. If you're recording in your own studio, a more relaxed, less detailed approach may be the right call, but staying organized is the most effective pre-production tool for every situation. It saves time and it keeps the focus where it should be. Any musician or engineer who disregards these preparations potentially can slow down the recording session and hamper creativity. So to review, pre-production for recording means being thoroughly familiar with the material to be recorded, making sure all parts are mapped out with instructions for the performers, producer, or engineer who needs them, having all gear, peripherals, and accessories ready for operation with duplicates on hand as necessary, having all computer data backed up and supplies on hand for duplication and taking home the results of the day's work, and most of all, ensuring that the recording studio has the right equipment and personnel for your needs. The most important aspect of pre-production is to be prepared in as many facets as you can think of of the recording process, from having your charts organized, having your band rehearsed, having yourself with plenty of sleep and in good health and good spirits when you get to the studio, allowing plenty of travel time. You really need to get everybody relaxed, get them to the studio early, get them in this position where they're going to be playing or singing so they can get acclimated to the environment and feel comfortable. A lot of times when you're spending money on studios, you're, you're paying for the experience uh, in making a certain type of record. You have to worry about the environment. You have to worry about the, the skill set of the pe person who's running the technical side of things. And you have to worry about the skill set of the person who's running the musical conceptual side of things, the, the producer. So the producer and the engineer, what you're buying from them in, in enlisting them to help you make a record is, your, is their experience and, their, and their, their years of dealing with things that pop up unexpectedly and their way of handling quality control. A lot of those issues are dealt with so the artist doesn't even know there was a problem. Producers and engineers can solve problems without even telling the artist that something was going on. And that's what you're paying for when you hire experience. You have to strike a balance between a guy who understands the vibe you're going for and a guy who's got a lot of experience. Sometimes when guys get big, big names, they don't want to deal with your inexperience. And that'll make you feel intimidated and you won't perform your best. You need somebody who's kind of in, kind of in between or somebody that has a good track record but still has a lot of enthusiasm for finding a, a young person who's got something to say and, and helping them say it in the best way possible. Some people have, have habits that they've gotten into, and even though they've experienced the problems that those habits cause, they still don't have a way of breaking out of their, their own DNA of who they are. For example, if you're not the kind of person who likes to write down your arrangements or who doesn't like to rehearse well enough on your arrangements, you like to come in and wing it, maybe that's the way you're going to make records, and possibly you'll come up with a gem at some point in your career. But you'll spend a lot of money 
in the process because you'll be using up studio time uh, to get your arrangements together and get your band rehearsed. And uh, likewise, um, some people come uh, with their instruments in, in a poor state of repair and they're always fiddling with their instruments during the course of the session. But if you come with everything organized and prepared, extra strings, no buzzes in your cables, you know, solid connections, your session's going to go much smoother. You're going to get a lot more done. And you might come up with new music on the spot that you didn't even expect. Mm -hmm.